we have another tale from Iceland. This is the Guardian of Bruce's Mound. And well, our story begins with a man who used to be employed digging, often as a farm labourer, but uh, one way or another, he was noted for his skill and prowess with a spade. And this man, well, we'll call him Halfdan. Halfdan the Digger. Now, Halfdan the Digger, he didn't want to stay working for other people for his whole life. He wanted property and wealth of his own. Although, he knew there was little chance of doing more than simply keeping a roof over his own head if he stayed in the same profession. Therefore, he decided to try something else. Now, he knew, in the same way as everybody else, that before the Icelanders had been converted to the ways of God, had become Christians, well, back in the time when they were pagan, when an important person died, they would be interred in a tomb made of earth, a burial mound. And indeed, there were many dotting the Icelandic countryside, and one in particular that had caught Halfdan's attention. This mound was the resting place of Brucey. He had given his name to the settlement of Brucestad. And, uh, well, Brucey, it said, had been uh, a prosperous, successful fellow. And it stood to reason that there had to be wealth or treasure of some kind buried in the mound with him. So, one day, Halfdan went to the mound, took his spade, and set to work. And he carried on for as long as he could until the day was done. And that night, he went to bed. And he fully intended to pick up where he'd finished the very next morning. And very soon he slept and dreamed. And in his dreams, a man came to him. A big, powerful, evil-looking man who told Halfdan to stop digging at once. So the next morning, Halfdan awoke, shook his head, cleared his eyes, and dismissed the dream. He went back to the mound, and to his surprise, he saw that much of the soil he dug out the day before had fallen back in. Nevertheless, he carried on digging once again, got a little further before night fell, and that night he dreamt again. But this time, when the man came to visit him, well, he was full of threats, dire things that he promised he'd do to Halfdan if he disturbed the mound any further. Nevertheless, the next morning, Halfdan, well, he was undeterred. And he got up. As soon as the sun rose, he didn't even bother breaking his fast. Nope, no food for him. He got straight to work. And therefore, because he wasted no time at all, by the end of the day, even though he had to clear out all the soil from the day before, which somehow had fallen back into the hole. All the same, he got far enough to strike something wooden. But at that point, it was dark. Therefore, he went to bed. And it was after midnight when the local folk heard a strangled cry. They rushed out, and they found Half Dan the Digger dangling from a tree branch. 
with the rope fast about his neck, choking to death. Just in time, they got to him, let him down, and gasping for breath. He had no idea what had happened, but when they looked, they could see a trail of bedclothes left between the tree and his front door. Clearly, someone or something had dragged him from his bed, hoisted him up and put the rope around his neck. And from that day, Halfdan stops his digging and he was troubled by the guardian of the mound no more. And that's the end of the story. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to click on the notification bell. Thank you.